Hi there, my name is Dr. Brent Hollers, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a project in Teams and then grade them in Replit. So Replit is a really neat online IDE. Um, I like to use it quite a bit in my classroom simply because it is a full-fledged IDE, as you'll see when we get into it. And um, it allows me to pass out assignments, grade assignments, allow students to pair program, um, it even lets them do um, version management through GitHub. There's a lot of different things that we can do in that. So let's go ahead and jump in and start working on a project. So the first thing we'll do is we'll click on Create Project. You'll choose which language that you're going to be programming in. In this case, I would do HTML. And then I give it a title. So maybe it's HTML selectors. And then for the description, I would give some description of what this activity is about. This is really important because you can also share these with other teachers in the community at large, which I'd encourage you to do. Um, so make sure that description is uh, uh, very complete and thought out. Uh, group projects allow you to let the students work in teams, uh, so like pair programming, that type of thing. There will be another video coming on how to do that. For this, we're just going to do a basic individual student working on an assignment. Then we would click on Create. Now, in the interest of time, I've already created an assignment here called HTML Tag Selectors. So once you click Create, it would actually take you straight into the IDE, which would look like this. So here's our IDE, um, and I've already created a few files. You'll notice that I've got an anime GIF that the students will have in their web page, and when I run it, um, this is just a basic page that needs styling. So the activity here is that students are supposed to go in and style this web page using the style.css sheet. One of the things I like to do is I like to include a readme.txt file um, inside of the file structure for them. And this contains all the steps that they're going to do. I think this is really nice just because, A, it gets them the ability to read the instructions directly in the assignment instead of having to go back and forth between an LMS or something like that. Um, and then, B, it allows them or gets them to start reading the readmes, right? So if you're doing things like version management through GitHub, um, it's important to read the readme. And so uh, it's getting them in that good habit uh, when they're working in uh, projects and assignments. So there's the readme, it has the instructions. This assignment is ready to go. So what I do is I hit Publish Project. I then click on the Publish button and click Save. And it's ready to go. Now I can click on my name of my team back here to come back here. And you'll see that this toggle over here is showing that it is published. Um, so it's now ready. And as a matter of fact, I have a student that already has submitted something so we can go in and grade that in a second. First, I want to show you what it looks like from a student's perspective. So we're going to go over to this particular student. And you'll see that before it's published, this is what it looks like. There's nothing there. And then when I click refresh, Here's their HTML tag selectors. By the way, this is in the category web design. There's a way of doing this so that you can categorize activities. Again, that'll be in another video. So this student has uh, their activity there. They can click on continue working or start work um, to begin working on their project. And that's how they would go through and complete the activity. It'll load their ID just like it normally would. It has all the information that I have already passed out to them. So. In here, you'll see that they have all that HTML, and this student has already completed all the CSS. And you're going to see these things up here. I'm going to talk about what those are um, here in a minute. So let's go back to our teacher view, and I'm going to grade that student's submission. So I'm going to click on View Submissions, and you'll see your list of submissions down here, and I'm going to click on View REPL. And this will take me into the IDE, but now it's showing me what the student has. So there's a couple of key areas that you want to note. So this is the navigate area. It allows us to navigate between the various student submissions. You'll notice that we only have one right here. Um, and this is the name of the current submission I'm looking at. You'll know that there's only one because you'll see one slash one. So what that means is that this there's one assignment in here and it's actually been graded. And the way that I know that is because it's one. If I uncheck review down here, You'll notice that it says zero of one. So this tells you how many have been graded or uh, are marked as reviewed. And this tells you how many total there are in submission. So that's the navigation pane. We then have the submitted pane where it tells us when it was last submitted. Uh, so when they actually turn the assignment in. And then we have this feedback pane. And basically we can check mark as reviewed, which says to the student and to us that it's been graded. Or we could click on unsubmit. If we do that, it would turn it back over to the student to make changes. So, for example, let's say they left some style elements out. I could do some annotations, which I'm going to show you in a moment. And then they could 
go back, take that those notes, improve their code, resubmit, and then I could grade it. So nice, um, nice ability to go back and forth with the student if I need to. And then I can even see the history of their code and what they did. So if I'm uh, concerned that maybe the student's copying and pasting the whole thing from another student or something to that effect, I can see their history. I can also see where they might have uh, made some mistakes as they were going. And then if I want to return to submissions, I can click on return to submissions and it would take me back to that list of submissions. In here, there's nothing that they're doing in the index.html, but if I go to files, style.css, we'll see that this is their style sheet that they did. And you'll notice I've already added some things called annotations. If I click on these, we can see them. So, for example, I said this is correct. Uh, for this one down here, they used three selectors with a comma. So I said excellent use of grouping selectors. So those are just ways of providing feedback without having to modify their code directly. Of course, I could modify it directly, um, but in this case, I'm just going and giving them some notes. So let's say that maybe the image was supposed to be 300 by 300. I could go in here, select this, and you'll notice that the annotate option pops up. I click on annotate and I can say image is supposed to be 300 by 300 pixels. I then click on the blue button or hit enter, and now they will see that feedback which you saw when I switched over to the student screen. Um, again, if I go back to my grading area, then I will see that I can either just mark this as reviewed or I could unsubmit it if I wanted to and make them go back and change that sizing. I'm going to go ahead and click on mark as reviewed. You'll notice that it says one out of one now, so this is graded. And then when I'm done, I can just click return to submissions and it takes me back to the main page. So that's how we create and grade a project in Replit Teams.